The limitations of law is his second. Civil power is given, argues Augustine, for the purposes outlined in Romans chapter 13. Rulers have been given temporary government of transitory realities. Being as we are, soul and body, while we are in this temporal life, we make use of temporary things for the necessity of our lives. It is logical, therefore, that we submit, in relation to the realities of present life, to the authorities who govern human realities. Now, as regards our faith in God and our call to his kingdom, we do not have to submit ourselves to any man when his intentions are precisely to overthrow what God has given us in order to eternal life. So Augustine is saying there's a proper role for government, government is about the temporary things, the necessities of life, but by the way, rulers have no right to interfere in religion to prevent us from following God. Law serves to deliver justice in relation to temporary things, and it serves to deliver only relative justice. Augustine thought that human government is solely a product of the fall. If human beings had never fallen, there wouldn't have been any government, was Augustine's view. Aquinas disagrees, but that was what Augustine thought. And so government and law is there to restrain the worst excesses of human sinfulness. It's natural in the limited sense of being an inevitable part of the world as we find it today, but not in the wider sense of being an integral part of the world as originally created. So law can only deliver relative justice. It can only focus on controlling the worst excesses of evil. Commenting on Romans chapter 3, verse 20, Augustine says, under the law we fight, but we are defeated. We recognize the evil of our actions, and this recognition leads us not to want to put them into practice, but since grace is still absent, we are still defeated. Also in that passage he says, good is the law, since it prohibits what should be prohibited and sends what should be done. But when one believes he can fulfill it in his own forces, Dispensing with the grace of the liberator, such pretension avails him nothing. Now, Augustine is talking there about the law of Moses, but he would make a, a, a same point by analogy in relation to Roman law. If the law of Moses, the God-given law, cannot make human beings virtuous, cannot make human beings good, any other legal system is going to be incapable of doing so as well. And, and that then leads Augustine to do something quite dramatic. He, um, as I said, was familiar with the Greek and Roman philosophical tradition, and there'd been a definition of what it meant to have a republic, what it meant to be a political community, which had been given by Cicero 400 years before Augustine. And Cicero says, a political community is a gathered multitude united by consent to right and common interest. United by consent to justice and common interest. So what Cicero says is a community has a common understanding of justice. Now when Augustine picks up that definition, he rephrases it and reformulates it. A community is an assemblage of reasonable beings bound together by a common agreement as to the objects of their love. Right and justice have disappeared from the picture. And they disappear from the picture because Augustine just does not want to ever admit that the Roman Empire could have any justice of its own. Like Marx, 1,500 years later, he simply refuses to use the word justice. That's, that's quite extraordinary. And the reason seems to be that for Augustine, reading the Bible in Latin, 
justicia is the word used to describe Jesus and God. And so Augustine's making a rhetorical point. He's saying there is so many light years between the justice of God on the one hand and the stuff that the Roman Empire does through its law that I'm not even going to use the same term to talk about them. Now that's rhetoric and hyperbole, it seems to me. You see, Augustine is quite happy to talk about the love of God and then the love of other stuff, to talk about the peace that we get from being right with God and then the peace that a a ruler can give us. The absolute and the relative. He'll do it with love, he'll do it with peace. And it seems to me, in principle, he ought to be capable of doing it in relation to justice without losing the key point, which is whatever we are doing through our legal systems is only relative and provisional. Trying to work that through in terms of its implications for today, uh, Oliver O'Donovan takes Augustine's idea and develops what he calls the wrong principle. The wrong principle states that government action is only justified when, in the absence of such action, wrong would be done. So you ask yourself, if government doesn't intervene, will wrong happen? Now, my field of expertise uh, in my professional life, the thing that pays the bills, uh, isn't unfortunately theology, or thinking about Augustine, uh, it is suing banks. And uh, banking is an area where we let the private sector get on with it until 2008, and then in 2008, when we discovered what an enormous mess the private sector had made of it, government stepped in. And government action is justified in those circumstances because if government does nothing things go wrong. People are wronged. You wouldn't normally, uh, if you were running a liberal democracy, uh, suggest uh, that people shouldn't go to the doctor if they've got a cough or shouldn't travel uh, and should be doing meetings remotely. But when you have a pandemic, people will be wronged if germs are passed around. So the idea is you don't have a defined shape for government. You have a principle which guides whether government should get involved or whether government should back off. So government's then been like a tide going in and going out. But everything for Augustine has to be justified on the basis that if it didn't step in, something would go wrong. And so much of what modern governments do, Augustine would regard as totalitarian, regulating that which should not be regulated, regulating in detail things where more general guidance would be sufficient. So there is a natural law. Human laws need to respond to that, but must recognise their limitations, that they can only ever do relative justice and that they are in principle uh, restricted in what they do. 